Okay, so in this video we're going to look at validation and we're also going to look at error handling in Python. So first of all we need to understand what validation actually means. Uh, well, data validation, as it says here, is the process of ensuring that a program operates on clean, correct and useful data. It uses routines, often called validation rules or check routines, that check for correctness, meaningfulness and security of data that are input to the system. Now what that really means is that validation rules in programming, they accept certain inputs from the user and reject other, uh, others. So if you think about when you log on to your computer, um, if you type in the wrong password, then it's not going to allow you to go any further. It's going to ask for your password again. It's going to continue to ask for a password until the correct input is actually entered into the system. It's going to reject others. So that's what a validation rule is. So we're going to have a look at validation rules in a bit more detail. And we're also going to have a look at how we can handle errors that may be put into our computer uh, program by the user. OK, so let's have a look at this program that I've created so far. I've imported time, um, just as a little extra, um, so that we can actually have our program um, waiting a couple of seconds before printing goodbye, and then waiting one second until it closes. But let's have a look at this program in a bit more detail. So what it actually does is it prints the, uh, a title, which is menu. It then prints a space. It prints one, display my name, two, display my age, three, display my address, and then another space here. So we've got a little menu system going up. And then what we've got is we've got an input statement, which asks us to, uh, or asks the user to type in a menu option, converts it to an integer, stores it in menu choice. And then we've now got down here um, our if else statements, if they type in a 1, it's going to print Mr. Wickens. If they uh, type in 2, it's going to print uh, the age, 29 years old. And if they print, uh, sorry, type in a 3, it's going to print to the screen Sibbeth College, the address. It's going to wait a couple of seconds. It's going to press good, uh, print goodbye and then close. So let's have a look to see um, this working. So here's the menu. I type in a 1 and it prints Mr. Wickens. It then says goodbye and then it closes automatically. Try it again. This time, 2, 29 years old, goodbye, closes, and print, uh, sorry, type in a 3, and it prints Sidmouth College, the address, goodbye, and then closes. So that's all very well and good. But unfortunately, it doesn't actually validate what I type in. I could type in a 0, I could type in a 4, I could type in any other number from 1, 2, and 3, and that wouldn't be very useful, it wouldn't be very effective in this program. So what we can do is we can set up a validation rule which means that it's only going to accept the numbers 1, 2 and 3. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a while loop. So we looked at while loops last lesson. So I'm going to type in the following. I'm going to say that while menu choice is less than 1, and I'm going to put that particular condition in brackets, then I'm going to type in or, and then in brackets again, going to type in menu choice is more than 3. I'm going to finish that off with a colon. I'm going to just indent that so it's inside the while loop. So what this is going to do is it's going to say that while whatever I type in is less than 1 or greater than 3, it's going to continue to ask me for a menu option. Now, because it's going to get to this point and it's going to just check that condition, because the program at this point in time doesn't know what menu choice is, that's actually happening down here, I just need to make sure that I type that up here. So I'm going to say that menu choice equals, uh, equals um, I'm going to say 0 because it needs to be outside of these conditions to have this loop actually working. So now, if I run this program, let's see what happens. So it's displaying everything that I want. Now if I type in, let's say, minus 3, it's asking me for my menu option again. If I type in a 0, menu option again, 4, 23, 356, it's asking for it again. If I type in 1, it allows me in, it displays my name, says goodbye, and then closes. And exactly the same, if I type in 2, it allows that entry, it validates that entry, it's in the acceptable range from 1 to 3, and also it accepts 3. Okay, so that is um, a validation working. Now, unfortunately, there isn't, this isn't a perfect validation because I could actually type in the following. I could type in, if I wanted to, 3, the word. And if I press enter, 
I get an error and it closes. So although it validates numbers 1, 2 and 3 as being acceptable inputs and the others being um, rejected, it doesn't actually handle that error. So what we're going to look at now is how we can actually handle errors in Python. So to do that, we can actually set up yet another while loop. I'm going to start it off by saying while true. Now that sounds a bit strange, while true, but what this is, this while true starts up an infinite loop that you can't actually break out of um, unless you specify that you want to. Um, so this while true is a little bit like a forever loop in Scratch. Okay, It just continues forever. What I'm going to say is while true, I'm going to get the program to try the following. I'm going to get it to try this condition. So it's going to try out whether the menu choice is in the acceptable range um, or, or not. And if it's not in the acceptable range, it's simply going to ask again for the uh, menu option. If it is in the acceptable range, then what I want it to do is I want it to break out of this loop. In fact, I want it to break out of this loop, uh, the while true loop, and move on. So that's if they type in a number. Okay, so if they type in a number that's in the range, it will break out of that loop and go on to the if else statement. If, however, they type in um, a number which is outside of this range, then it's going to continue to ask for the input. So that's exactly what we had before. But what this while true and try um, and the next thing is uh, that I'm going to type in is this, it's going to handle any errors that are typed in. So if, for example, they don't type in an integer, obviously this would be uh, this would ca cause an error because we can't convert um, a non-integer um, into an integer data type. So instead of the program closing, I'm going to what I'm going to tr try and do is I'm going to try and um, actually handle that error. So I'm going to type in accept. I'm going to type in value error. I'm going to print to the screen the following. Please type in a number. Exclamation mark. And we'll see what happens now. If I run the program, it says what is my menu option. If I type in a zero, it's going to ask for the menu option again. So here it's trying out this while um, menu choice is less than one or menu choice is more than three. Um, ask for the menu option, convert it to an integer, put it into menu choice and check again. So that's what's happening here. And again, if I put in something outside of that range, 23, it's going to ask for that number again. If I type in the number 2, it allows me uh, to break out of this um, loop and go on to this if-else statement, which is fantastic. But what I wanted to do is also be able to handle errors. So if they type in a non-integer value, for example, a string, um, a word, then let's see what happens now. If we type in 3. Okay, what it's done is it's actually got that value error and it's printed, please type in a number. So instead of it program, uh, pro the program closing, it's actually caught hold of that error. It's typed in, please type in a number. And then because it's inside this infinite loop, it's going to then try again, stating what is your menu option. I type in another word. I type in 20. OK, please type in a number. What is your menu option? I type in the correct value, 3, and it allows me to go on to that if-else statement. It waits two seconds, it prints goodbye, and then it closes. So that there is an example of how we can validate using a while loop. So there's a validation, um, only accepting numbers in a certain range. And this here, this while true, try, and accept value error, this here is our error handling. Okay, So what we can do is we can try out um, an imp uh, a question um, to the user asking for an input and if there's an error then what it's going to do is it's going to actually handle that error instead of closing the program down print a message to the screen and then because it's in a while tr true loop it's going to loop around again and it's going to ask for the user to type in their entry again. So a little bit confusing, I understand, but hopefully we followed that one.